Can we hear each other yet? I was involved in You know, we used to be tobacco, then we were turkeys and but, um, you know, I I'm, I'm the liaison to that. I will find out and make that a Maybe we could use some of the grant money for it, you know, for the 5,000. Yeah, well, let's, um, let's talk well, about it. We'll talk about it. But anyway, I, I just, it, I want to wait a minute. Yes. <clears throat> hey, Tamara. How is everybody? Doing good. Hope you are. Busy, busy. Brian can understand. I know. How's the snack business? I know the banking business is crazy. I'll see his banking and triple it. <clears throat> it really? Anything like my pantry, it must be doing pretty good. We get two weeks worth of supplies and they're gone in three days. <laughs> you and everybody else on the planet. We can't make it fast enough. You can't make enough potato chips fast enough? It's not slow down at all. up for all of the lost revenue and the games, the ball games? 
that and pole vaulted to a whole nother level, Karen. Oh, wow. It's, uh, and the thing, that's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't stay in your pantry, to your point, Brian. It it's, comes in and to get a bag a pack of 50 different kinds of potato chips yeah those are the bigger ones right now we because we can't produce them as fast as we can the other stuff the other stuff just runs wide open so with the shortage of meat we're eating potato chips Run out. <laughs> what was that, Brian? Need to go out six hundred. There's been a lot of folks on Facebook posting questions like, "They're just going to call me, or do I need to fly?" <laughs> Kelly, did she send back a response to your email? I haven't heard. So, um, what is protocol? Do we? It's one o three. I can tell us. Say, give, given uh, cameras need to leave, if we wait to start the meeting, then we'll lose camera on the back end. So we've got four of the five. Let's, right. let's start. So, um, Kelly, would you text? Uh, Al and Steve. Okay, very good. Well, then I will call the meeting to order. And if you all would join me in a moment of silence. Okay, number three, adoption of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Um, number four, we're going to <clears throat> uh, do our discussion regarding the FY 2020-2021 budget challenges. Lane, I'm going to turn it over to you to walk us through. How would you like to start? Thank you, Mayor. And we'll just go down in order. And, and let me, I may tee up each of the little bullet points there and then uh, pass it off. Um, one of the things that we've been blessed with in the city is we've got a pretty strong fund balance. Um, it could always be stronger. Uh, one of the negatives is that we were starting to trend down, but feel a 33% fund balance is pretty solid. Uh, and um, had through my career, people ask why you have a good fund balance. And I've never thought to tell them in case we were to have a worldwide pandemic. Um, I've talked about uh, uh, hurricanes and the state budget shortfalls, but never not this. Uh, and the Mayor Pro Tem had the wrong time. She thinks this is at 1.30. Sended her a text on that. Um, but I, I'd like to kick it off over to Wade to talk a little bit about some projections there, unless you want to uh, see if I get a text back. Al, it's, he was thinking it was 1.30, and I said, no, it started now. Um, Y'all want to wait just a minute or two? Yeah, right on. I, I I don't know, don't know. I'd just like to comment on the health fund balance. I mean, thirty 
agree, 30 to 35 percent is healthy, but that's four months. In the scheme of things, I mean, the eight cents one month of reserves, which I think yeah. is is this, is really skinny. You know, that to be the minimum on a state law basis. So we've got a four month reserve, which is not that much. No, no. Uh, but let me. Uh, Kelly, can you send out the link to her Gmail account this meeting? All right. Uh, yes, I do know she was having trouble signing into her city emailer. Yeah, I think the. Uh, you said, yeah. You also she also it the, by phone. She's going to do that through her iPhone, but she's uh, had a problem. Um, I, I, you want? I forward it. One. This is the Gmail, not city email. Right. I got it. Okay. And I'll send her a text and let her know. I just anybody have her on text? I, I'm on texting with her now. Just tell her I just sent her. I just forwarded her the uh, to her Gmail account. She used that that link though. She'll find in a post. Let me send one to her Gmail. If she's no, I sent it to her. To be signed in as me. Yeah. Has have an, a special identity uh, password. Get in. Oh. <laughs> so we'll have two, Mr. Pegg. We could only handle one of those. <laughs> she would, and she would not be happy. <coughs> For good reason. So Brian, are you guys just totally swamped? This while we're waiting for her, just overwhelmed right now. Uh, it comes in fits and starts. Right now, this the uh, SBA window reopening has not mm -hmm. gone without its uh, bumps in the road. So it's kind of a little bit of a bottleneck going on right now. On NPR's marketplace yesterday, Kai Rizdal started off said, "Well, I got good news and I got bad news. Good news is we've got a." Three hundred billion dollars for small businesses. The bad news is the website doesn't work. Yeah, they 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 uh, gave banks an option. They could send everything in one file, but if there was one error on any of the files, then none of the guarantees would hold. Or they could send them one at a time. You've also got a situation. You're a big bank, you know where smaller banks could not do it unless you had at least 5,000 applications at once. And so they felt they were locked out again. Been a big thing, you know, that they, they didn't talk about you guys. They talked about Bank of America and Chase and Wells Fargo had, are the ones who clogged the system. Not sure you could have designed it where somebody wouldn't have gotten their feelings hurt. To be honest with you, I don't see how you yeah manage that much money that quick anyway. I just it's just recipe for all kinds of problems. Do we have an update from Al? She's still having trouble getting logged on. We're trying to work through it. I'd like to welcome Ryan Reynolds to the meeting. Yes, you, you, Graham Courier. He can grow a beard quicker than anybody. Didn't know we had a movie star with us in our midst. Who what? Photo later. I'm not. He, he, oh, that's right. He's not down the hall from you anymore. I, I'm not sure who Ryan Reynolds is. I'll ask you. I'll take it as a compliment. It was meant as one. Actually, he's an actor laying between you and your kids. They may not know him either. Okay. Well, 
By the way, you're welcome to listen to the birds while we wait. I know they've been chirping so much at our house too. It's wonderful. I haven't heard them chirp like this. And we have food owls as well. This, this is on, on Fulton Street? Mm-hmm. Wow. We have a, one, one tree and one in another, and they um, communicate back and forth. <laughs> Ma mating calls, right? Yeah. Hey, Graham, are you like the Deadpool, Ron Reynolds? Yeah, I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> No, that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We just, just just go with the proposal. We're, we're that that's good. <laughs> Is there no press here? There is twenty four other people. I'm not sure if calls on the twenty eight other participants. I'm not sure if they're one of those or not. But they're a total of 28. Yeah. And we have department heads and management team and budget staff. I know for a month this. My request to the council is if we get to 15 minutes after the hour, if she's still having trouble, let's just move forward. Okay, well, and then staff, staff can get back with her on what she missed. Okay, so. so give, her, give her another minute, Karen. At 115, let's move on. Okay, it is 1.15, so Lane, the floor is yours. Okay, and um, as we were discussing, uh, these are the reasons why you have a fund balance on, and uh, concerned about how we finish at the end of the year and then going forward. And I'd like, to, Kelly, if you could share the screen, but I'll turn it over to Wade Purchase, and he can go over some projections that he has uh, and then we'll we'll highlight those and then move on to uh, some projections we have for uh, the uh, upcoming fiscal year. <clears throat> Wade. You're still on mute, Wade. Yeah, you're muted, Wade. Can you make it a little bit bigger. that. You need to go to view and change the view, Wade, just to make it easier to see. Okay, I can. Can you yeah. see the the spreadsheet? This up. Okay, there you thank go. you, Thank you, Kelly. Nope. Go to view and hit normal. You're not on normal. There you go. There How's that? That's good. Okay. Um, before the stay-at-home order came into place, we, we've gotten through most of our fiscal year. Our revenues actually don't look bad at all. Taxes are looking pretty good. Um, but expenses are continuing on as well. Uh, we've got payroll. We've not laid people off. Um, Newsom Road widening projects. Other projects are going on. Uh, so we still have expenditures on going. going. Um, right now, uh, as you can see, we're projecting about a, a $1.8 million deficit uh, for FY20. Keep in mind that we, we budgeted to use uh, over $4 million of fund balance because that's basically budgeting a $4 million loss. This is 
Um, better than that, if we come in at 1.8, then that's going to drop that fund balance finish down to 27. Bit. That's a five and a half uh, percentage point drop. <laughs> So that's, that's what we're potentially looking at. Uh, I don't know that we're going to hit 1.8. Uh, projections at this point are very hard. Um, numbers can change every day. We got projects that are budgeted that may or may not get done. Um, but in you know, a potential deficit of uh, up to 1.8, that's including the capital project funded. Wait. Yes. At $40 million. Uh, forty million nine hundred eighty-seven thousand projected revenues. Yes. Was that our projection at the beginning of the fiscal year? Budget is actually um, fifty-one million, but in that fifty-one million, you got four million of uh, fund balance appropriated. We've got about two point three million dollars of grants that we know we're not going to get, and. In our budget, 51 million includes the transfers from the water and sewer fund and the stormwater fund. When we do the cap, those are netted off of expense. And I've done this projection like we would present the cap. So if you take the 4 million from fund balance, 2.3 million of grants we're not going to get, 3.5 million of transfers from the other funds, 40 million is really it for the rest of the, the revenue. Is about break even, maybe even slightly ahead. How did, is there any adjustment for sales taxes we probably won't get? Yeah, um, we're going to get to that in, in just a bit, but but yes. Kel, do you, you want to go to the next screen? Um, that says fiscal 21, not fiscal 20. Okay, here we go. This is sales tax. We just need to scroll up. So the um, our sales taxes have been strong all year long, and before the stay-at-home order, we were projecting uh, you know maybe nine hundred thousand dollars over budget. So the League of Municipalities has given advice, but they have projected anywhere from a ten to a twenty-five percent decrease in sales tax. That's a, a pretty wide range. What I've got in front of you here is this shows you how much a based on last year from March to June and that's that the months that are affected um, and those revenues will come in from June June September okay we won't actually get March's tax revenue until September until June okay so if we were to see a 10 percent decrease over those four months it's going to short us by two hundred ninety thousand dollars three, three months March, April, May, and June. Okay. Okay. Um, March, I, I don't anticipate a huge decrease because the stay-at-home order was not in effect the whole month, but people were already starting to, to distance. People were already starting to not go to stores. So uh, we do expect some, some decrease in March, uh, which would be June's payment. And then the payments we get in July, August, September are – Thrown back into FY20 as revenue because they're attributable to April, May, and June. I expect to see a little bit more decrease in there, but we have no, really, no way of knowing. Um, you know, some stores lows. Everybody says the spot. Um, the grocery stores are operating. You got restaurants that are still operating, but you have stores like Belt Coles that are not. So, it, online sales are probably strong. So, it, it, it's hard to say. Are we going to end up? 10%, 25%, 30%, we really don't know. But what I've tried to show you here, like at 25%, it would it would cost about $725,000. Wait, when people buy from Amazon, which has been considerable, I mean, you know, it's their sales are up 25 or 30% nationally. If I buy something from Amazon, does and, and they charge sales tax, does that sales tax trickle back to row in, does the, I know it goes to the state first. Does the state then trickle that back to Rowan County? Yes, sir. We get our share. So it's by zip, it's by shipping zip code, I presume, right? Is that the way Amazon works? Shipping zip um, code? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that that's the way it works. So your your point here is that even if we're down 25% for the last four months of the year, since we were about 900 up, for this fiscal year, we'll, we'll be okay on the sales tax. Yeah, I, for my projections, I actually projected um, break even to come in right on budget. So my projection actually has a, a about a $900,000 decrease from where we were projecting. So, um, you know, trying to be conservative. But, so, so yes, we... I think I still think we will come in on budget sales tax. Now going forward, uh, it, it's just a guess. Um, I don't think there's any way to know, but we'll start to get some semblance of what's going on in, in June when we get March paper. So right way, let me let me uh, restate what I heard because that's how I my process. Prior to the, the stay at home order, we were trending. What appeared to be a nine hundred thousand dollar over budget element in sales tax collection. Is that true? That's true. And if we then see as an impact, now granted that trend was for eight months, not for twelve. Um, if we have a twenty five percent decrease, that would eat up most of that projected surplus. Is that correct? That's correct. So that's why you think we're going to end up pretty much on par with what we expect. Yes, sir. So if I understand your first slide correctly, we were expecting to have to contribute $4 million rough unbalanced. Right now, we're only expecting to be about one eight. That's correct. Again, there's a lot, of, a lot of room to move in those numbers. Yes. But we're $2, $2 million according to these projections to the good at this point in time, based on what you're looking for. And let me speak to, to that. Uh, traditionally, the city has uh, budgeted fund balance and up until last year we've been able to avoid appropriating balance last year uh that be more difficult about one two is what we appropriated last year. um it was our hope to not appropriate the full four million this year the rest of our revenues would be um conservative enough and we within budget on our expenditures and we wouldn't have to do that. but certainly two million is better than four million hey do we have a um a breakdown of by industry percent of where we get our sales tax because if we're getting our sales tax let's say 50 percent is coming from um dollar general food line of lowe's I mean, do we have an idea on the industry? Because then we'll know the real impact. No, ma'am. Uh, we don't have, we don't get a breakdown like that. Um, I think the state does put out numbers, maybe not until the end of the year, on like manufacturing, what came from manufacturing, what came from retail, right. stuff like that. I don't know that they put that out on a monthly basis. I think they do put it out manually. I've mean, looked at that weight. I think that they might. It, it's pretty detailed, I, but I, I don't recall whether it's monthly, quarterly, or annually, but that's yes, a really, that's a good question, Cameron. And then, wait, I, I appreciate I will, you. I will look into that. I appreciate you planning on the conservative side of this. This is where we need to live. Um, but there might be upside. depends on how our percentage is skewed based off of the places that we know are just, through our previous conversation, just gangbusters. So we may hopefully light it in the tunnel. It's not as bad, but I do like the fact that planning conservative. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just break for a second. Uh, Al had just texted me and said that after trying multiple times, the computer system, the city system is not allowing her to get in. So uh, she wanted me to announce that. So it's not for a lack of um, trying uh, that she's not participating in the meeting. So just wanted to announce that. So Wade, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Um, any, any more questions about the sales time? I want to mention one thing in an email I'd sent to council um, 
last week, I had a higher number and I included uh, these franchise tax in there. That's generally a little safer, but that's one that I have worries if the state gets into a tight pinch, they may start looking at revenue it, 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 revenue they could be slower to pay in the local governments. They've done that in the past, but um, I, I think for right now we're pretty safe on that number, but if it adds to the state, they may come after some of them. Um, no question about that. Can you go on to our property tax collections? And last year, that this year we were in a reval, and we got numbers a little later from uh, the county after we had already adopted the budget. And that could be a, some good news for us. And I'll let Wade talk about that. property tax again. FY20, um, we're in good shape. Taxes are due on. January the 6th, the most people had paid their taxes. We still have some coming in. We're getting about $100,000 this month even. So uh, we've already exceeded FY20 budget for taxes. So, so this year looks good. Uh, next year, as you can see, the FY21 tax levy will project to 22,600,000. Uh, if we collect at the same rate that we have in the, in, in the past, this is using an FY19 collection rate at 98.58. We'll collect $22.3 million. If you remember back in the recession, um, the last recession had collection rates dropped. And I went back and looked. The, the lowest they got was FY12 at 95.31 cents. If FY21 reverts back to FY12 collection rate, then that's going to cost us about $740,000 in property tax. Each 1% drop in tax collection rate costs $226,000. So if, we, if we're still in recession level come December, January, this, this may impact. By the seven out. Yes, it, if, if we drop all the way down to 95%, that would be basically a 3% drop in collection rate. I'm not saying that's going to happen. We hope it doesn't. We, we get a large chunk of our taxes in July and August, because that's when the, the bank pay their escrow tax. Um, so we'll, we'll still collect strong in July and August, I believe, that where we could see a drop is people making their, their own tax payment in December, January. Wade, one question about that recession level. We eventually collect those when the property sold or later years. It's, it's kind of a timing issue, isn't it? If I don't pay my taxes this year, my house gets sold, and the first thing paid out of the proceeds from that sale are back taxes, right? You're correct. Um, there's a Schedule 9 in the uh, statistical section of the CAFR, and I know you all have it right there in front of you, um, <laughs> shows that, um, you know, even at even 2012, the total that we collected over the, over the years is 99.77% of that, of those taxes. So yes, there's a good chance, even if we don't get that money. What I'm show, trying to show here is the revenue loss for FY21, because that's the budget. Good. I get it. Okay. Just wanted to yes, it, and it could it could actually mean more revenue for future years, if 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 and when if when those taxes are collected. You're correct. Both. And also, it uh, affected by the debt set off that's collected by the state, right? Um, yeah, I, I think that the, the state does use the debt set off to collect that. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure on that. But I think you're correct. Mr. Post's point, that's one difference between property tax and sales tax. If property tax, if sales tax dips, that money's gone. It doesn't fight. But if they don't pay their property, you don't pay your property tax, 
calendar year, we will eventually collect on. Are, are there questions about our property tax project? That's for, that's this year, not next. No, that's for FY twenty one. Next year, what we're we're looking at for the next fiscal year. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I get it. FY twenty is in good shape. At, at this point, current year. At this point, we've collected about most of the property tax we collect here. As Wade mentioned, tax July and August get the discount, and then a lot of people what pay like the last week of December, the first January before the penalties. Lane or Wade, just one last question on this: uh, To what extent um, does the tourism economy? Um, you have any idea of how much of our revenues from a sales tax standpoint is coming from outside the county? We have any numbers that show that? No, sir. I don't think. Because I think, you know, I'm just postulating here that a lot of the stuff we buy locally, yeah, we're maybe not going out to much, but really the thing that's a big delta is going to be the folks that aren't coming here to spend money, right? Well, that's a good point. Sales tax. <clears throat> there are well, occupants down in some hotels 10 percent occupancy so that's going to be huge they're 10 percent at half the rate right i mean there there are there are hotels out there that are running half or third their average rate also right i, I don't think that's what mr miller's talking about in terms of our sales tax dollars i we, we i know those folks do shop but I think what he's talking about, um, what I've heard in terms of retail leakage in and out of the county, and with the big box stores that we have in our community with uh, Dick Sporting Goods, Hobby Lobby, open back up. Well, you have people from outside of Rowan County driving in to shop. Uh, that, that's good. Uh, when we go to Charlotte to shop, that's, that's bad. And if you... Uh, convert all those shoppers to online shoppers, then we're losing uh, what I think you call the tourism sales tax dollars. And it's really people driving from outside of the surrounding counties into shop. I think that's what he was referring to. And, and maybe we offset some of that people that would have otherwise driven to Charlotte if they're shopping at Amazon that stays here. Maybe that's a wash. Moving on down to the other uh, potential revenue loss, that Wade and Shannon both kind of talk about these numbers here below. So, Wade, are you starting? Yeah, I, uh, Shannon, do you want to uh, speak to this? Okay, um, Shannon, jump in if you if you can. Um, what you're looking at is, is collection number. Um, as you know, we, we cannot uh, and are not disconnecting uh, people from our water and sewer system non-payment. Uh, uh, Wade? Yes. I think we skipped over. Uh, General fund. Go back one page, go to the bottom of that page. That's what I was referring to. Yeah. Uh, our interest yeah. earnings and... Uh, some of that, Let, let's hit that first. And I think that's okay. where y'all were, were, were splitting up uh, some duties there. But why don't you start and then Shannon, you jump in and we'll move forward. Okay, so in addition to sales taxes, uh, we have several line items that are getting impacted of revenue stream. Um, this is looking ahead for FY21. Interest earnings aren't bad this year. We still uh, have commercial paper that's doing doing fairly well, uh, but interest rates have dropped. The North Carolina Capital Management Trust now is in the uh, 45 basis range, uh, and you know, we were upward uh, of one and a half to close to two. So uh, you can you can tell we, we've dropped pretty much. So interest earnings next year are going to be down. Uh, vehicle rental taxes are, are down, parked back. Uh, we're not running any programs, and we're not uh, running any facilities. So uh, take a look at that. We just want to throw that out there for information. Shannon, anything you want to add? Penalties and late fees will go into a little bit more detail in the next slide. And um, one of the items that we've 
budgeted a small amount of revenue as sale of assets, and that's where we replace fleet vehicles or have equipment in the city. Um, we sell those on Gutfield line. Um, with construction being up, there's been a deep market for our used vehicles. Um, just this year alone, in the first nine months, we received three five thousand dollars in revenue. Um, so, but, um, that may not continue in next this year. Was that budgeted this year? Um, I think we actually only budgeted a very small amount of money. Um, that 135 is way over what we budgeted. That's actually what we brought in this year. And not Are there, uh, those other numbers, it doesn't show, it just shows what your, what next year could be. Is it, these are, that 480,000 is dollars that you do not anticipate next year. We likely would not see these same revenue streams in these. And out of that 480, how much of that was in our budget this year? Because like the sale of assets, you said it was a lower number. Um, interest earnings, I believe, budgeted about 250,000. Um, okay. We're pretty much on par to receive that current fiscal year. We've actually already cut that upcoming budget cycle by a third. So that 165, yes, that pretty much going to go away um, from you mean, what, it, it, that, the 165 is going away or the 80,000 differentials from last year? We've actually only budgeted $80,000 in the FY budget for interning. So it went from 250 to eight. Okay, so that's the, <laughs> okay, that's the delta. Okay. Yes. Rental vehicle, it, it's hard to tell. Um, the first nine months of this year, we've received about $6,500 on average. Um, depending on where the stay at home and travel restrictions are in place, um, that likely will decline. We just don't know about how much yet. Um, how much was the budget? Is it the 78,000 this year's budget? Yeah, I think it's like a, I think it's 80-ish, 80, 82, somewhere around there. What's that, people renting U-Hauls and cars? Yeah, you know, enterprise, budget rental, any type of rental vehicles. So you're anticipating z virtually going from 80,000 down 2,000 for the next fiscal year? Well, the, again, these are potential impacts. These aren't right. necessarily the entire cut we're going to make in the budget, but the potential areas where we're going to lose some loss of revenue. I, I guess what I'm saying, it's hard to understand this if I don't see last year as a comparative know, and see what the difference is. In other words, last year, next year, difference. That's why I'm asking the question. So the next item, parks and rec, get 5000 a month. And what you're telling us is we might lose all of that. There's a potential to lose some of these. If, if again, if we continue at a, you know, a stay at home and we continue not to rent facilities, that's a potential loss of up to $60,000. And, and the penalties and late fees, that was 42000 in this year's budget, but we could lose all of that? If we, you know, if we make a decision at, at a local level to tamper down some of our penalties and, and late fees on some of our accounts, there's a potential there in the general fund. That one, actually, we go into a little bit more detail in the next slide by fund breakdown, but just the general fund is about um, 3500 to 3800 So... so the longer we hold a no penalty policy, um, the more this impacts the budget. So this list is the amounts that are, except for the interest, effectively, these are the amounts that are in this year's budget <laughs> that we received, although we received about 250 in interest. Right? So the real, so we were expecting to lose two thirds of our interest income, but everything else is being conservative and anticipating we basically lose 100% what we received this year. Is that correct? Yeah. I think these are more of, these are unknown areas that could be impacted in the budget. We don't know at what point and for how long um, it will impact the FY. Oh, I, I get that, but basically those numbers represent, you know, 99% of what we did get this year. So you're saying let's not count on a single one of those dollars except for a little bit of interest next year. Correct. Okay. 
this this year has probably been the strongest. Um, Wade can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this year's been one of the strongest um, sale of asset revenue we we've had in a very long time, um, as we have tried to um, sell surplus and um, used assets as quickly as possible. There were but but that was not in the budget. You said a very small number was in the budget. So if twenty thousand was in the budget, that means we actually received 115,000 more than we anticipated. So we're not really losing 135 compared to last year's budget. We're losing 135 compared to this year's receipts. Any questions about that before we move on? Issues? I'd like to ask a Brian Miller question. Um, Sometimes when we present these things, it'd be really nice to see what the budget was right. and, what, and what the act, you know, there's no comparative basis here to see what the budget was, what actual was, what the projection is, you know, um, that, that would make it a little easier. Cause like the sale of assets, for example, that's 120,000 we received, we didn't anticipate. So we wouldn't anticipate it next year either. Yes. Else. Oh, yeah. On the uh, collections, let's move to that page. And um, here in council recall, we decided folks who had been disconnected from water and sewer just before the shelter in place. Be more lenient on this act, governor. Further enhance that order, but made it more stringent. And Brian Miller asked an update on how we stood on these. But chance to speak to that. Typically, we'd have about two twenty-five on this this. Board. Yeah. So the last week of the month. So actually the week that we're in is typically um, when we run our cutoff list and we physically um, make disconnections um, throughout our system on the water and sewer side. And um, as Mr. Bailey said, on a normal mark, we cut off, we would have cut off about 105 accounts. Um, our delinquent account that meet the criteria cut off during this week was actually 427. So not quite, twice as many as we would have seen um, with the executive order in place and of those 427 accounts um, the actual revenue um, that is unpaid are split between these three funds um, the general fund are mostly your charges for sanitation waste like fees um, stormwater fees and then um, also the water and sewer fund for water and sewer um, between those 427 accounts, um, they total um, revenue stream for the city of about $144,000. Um, we've also shown the numbers for East Spencer. Even though those do not affect our finance, we do still bill for their service area. And so they are a part of what we would um, cut off in a normal month. Cycle. The impact of um, not charging penalties um, just for the month of April. Had we run that um, report last week, um, we would have actually charged these, um, actually these 427 customers plus some additional delinquent account, a total of $18,000 throughout um, those three funds, the general funds, water and water. And then again, each center does not affect our financial, we've shown the amount of we would have charged um, for their citizens. And could I interrupt with a question? Yes. Um, these are not forgiven amounts. These are just things that we're holding uh, in their accounts for payment at a future date, correct? Yes. I think penalties may be different than that, though, Mr. Miller. I think the governor's executive order says that you can't charge a penalties. Now, we could. No, I'm not talking about penalties. I'm talking about the services themselves. That, you're correct. So, assuming we get on the other side of this thing, uh, the question I would have is how are we going to work with folks over time to allow them to get back up to date 
that may be something that we answer another time. But, you know, if I've got two months worth of unpaid bills, you know, and we're back to working in a normal standpoint, I'm assuming we're not going to immediately then force the amount owed. It, have there been any thought about how we're going to address that? And again, if, it, if you're not prepared to talk about that now, that's fine. I can uh, give a very brief answer to that. Uh, I think we would work with folks. I also think this is where organizations, churches, helping hands ministries and groups like that are very important to help with that. And I also think that it's important for folks to understand that these aren't forgivable forever ever. And if you could make the payment, you're better off doing this now before you accumulate a much more the bill. There's also a provision in the executive order um, for a six for a required six month payment plan for customers that are doing when we get out of the executive order. So my, my point basically is that while I don't know that we'll collect all of them, I do think there will be some collection um, of so while it is certainly a headwind, if you will, relative to how we go about addressing the budget, coming conversation that we're going to have, it still is not necessarily a hole that cannot, will never be plugged. It takes time. So Beerley was making a point. This is different than, than, you know, revenues that don't happen because they didn't occur. This is something that's going to happen. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Wade, I have, Shannon, I have a question. Is this for one month? So obviously these accounts have accumulated over March and April because we stopped the disconnections in March um, prior to the executive order. So this is where we're at had we run the cutoff this month. And that averages about $350 per account, which seems to me pretty high. Um, I mean, I know my water bill isn't 350 a month. Um, that's why I was asking about the time. I mean, is this multiple months? Of, I mean, like, I mean, Without getting into too much detail as when we do cutoffs, we do allow some grace period before we disconnect water. Generally, there's a, more than a month behind in dollar amount before we do that. This is the threshold of where we would normally cut off. Again, I mentioned on a normal month, it might be 225. This is almost double the number. Yeah, but if you divide the 144 by 427, my point is that's averaging $350 per household. That's is that a if that's only one month, oh. it, it, it's multiple months, sir, okay. and maybe larger account mix them with probably multiple. In in our experience, what because Brian was saying we'll eventually collect that. What's our experience when we have cutoffs that we ever, what's our collection experience on those? Do we ever get any of that money? Yeah, do we have a percentage we get? So one of the things that we have started doing in customer service is we um, contact and make phone calls to customers that are on the cutoff list now before we just go out and cut off. A lot of times we get those customers to come in and make this payment before we cut off. Um, we also, in the past, have set up some payment arrangements with, with folks um, to give time. And um, additionally, any debts that are not paid after we cut off, um, we also can do through the line of debt collection. What, what is that? Um, so the North Carolina Debt Set-Off Program is, is administered through the State Treasurer's Office, and um, it goes after um, taxes and or lottery that folks um, may have. So tax, re tax refunds, and then they funnel that back to the to, to us. Right. right. We get about 100,000 a year. Last year we did in that program, according to the record. <clears throat> and some of that may be proper tax, rather. Right. A lot of it is. Yeah. Names have to line up exactly in order to do those. But, but we have a huge number of customers to have 
small amount of cutoff. I think that the, the way we work with folks being also charitable organizations have been the community that help people who are behind. Continue to encourage folks and assist those organizations. Any other questions on that? Um, do we want to move on to some rate increases? Um, I mentioned um, earlier that not certain how many tax increases I've proposed in my career. Managers like to do that. And we always think taxes could be higher. I have a real concern about doing that, given the concerns about rates and just where the economy may be headed. But the this next page here, items listed on this, we're recapturing actual costs per customer. And uh, the first set on uh, waste management fees, um, the recycling number pretty close to where it will need to be based on the agreement that the uh, contract y'all awarded the other night. I will say but we haven't attorney still review in the agreement. I haven't got, hadn't been executed yet. So if you had some concerns, there's still some wiggle room there. These other items below, as we continue to make cuts in the uh, solid waste budget, uh, these costs could go down a little bit as our costs are going down, the need the rate increase could decline also. But I think Shannon could probably do a better job of explaining the rest of that and then we'll open that up for questions. So in regards to our fee recovery for our, our landfill and our waste collection, um, we look at the full cost recovery for our, our all of our curbside services which includes our trash, our recycling, and our yard space that's left um, at the curb. And so we look at all, all of the direct operating costs for our waste management call center and also our limb and yard waste um, costs. And there's also some, some small percentage for the indirect cost for administration oversight and other staff this um, those two areas. Uh, plus we build in some of our uncollected revenue-based experience of the revenues that we do not collect. And so with, with that said, um, the, the full cost for all of these operations, are, I think it's around two, seven uh, million for all of these um, with the um, personnel, the recycling contract and the actual plan part being the largest. Of and so again, as Mr. Bailey said, as we tamper down some of the um, request items budget, um, we can tamper down the rate. We would look at revised rate. We have balance based operation. So are you going to go into the water sewer increase? Could I ask a question first? Sure. Graham. <laughs> There's probably never been provision in a contract, which is the opposite of force majeure, which was what was implemented to increase the recycling fee two years ago. In the event that I would like to see it, the possibility, and you know, your wordsmithing genius and your negotiating genius, to have a provision basically says if the world situation and recycling reverses itself, India or Brazil or somebody says, yeah, we'll, you know, some African company says, country says, yeah, we'll take your recycling, the costs go back down to where they were two years ago, that we would get the benefit of that so that we don't have to just pay the increase. But if, if anything happens, I mean, China used to take 90% of the world's recycling, 70% of the United States recycling. And they said no because of the tariffs. That's what hit us. And 
two years ago, the rates went up. I think Lane didn't they? We didn't pass, we did not pass that on at the time to the taxpayer. We just absorbed that, correct? And so, I mean, if there's a way to negotiate, if if the, if the world reverses itself, I mean, you're not going to always be able to get round trip tickets on an airplane to Europe for ninety nine dollars. That's going to change. Uh, the world reverses itself. There ought to be some way for us to be the beneficiary of a cost reduction as opposed to just being, you know, the payor of a cost increase. Just think about it. I'm not asking you to make That's a decision. Something. Yeah, the challenge is pegging that some number, um, number the commodity price, whatnot. There's, as, it's, as it stands, the contract has a six-month termination clause, so six-month notice. Did it if prices go away. Okay. That's the protection that's built in there. I'll certainly get the city when we, before we actually. Or, or a short, is it a mutual six month termination? And the only built in increase is what is standard built in increase. Yeah. Um, the last, but it's a three year contract, one year. Um, one year at a time, renewable upon satisfactory performance. As long as performance satisfactory, they'll get a year and a third year. And then there's a mutual six month termination. I, I know that Craig is on this call. Um, my, uh, we have a wonderful label, you know, on our website if people look at it. I went to look at it because my neighbor at a party and his entire recycling bin was made up of beer bottles. And we don't do glass. Um, so I decided to walk up and down my street and up and down in a street. So all kinds of stuff on that list that are in the recycling bins. What happens when the recycling bins are 10% or 40% non-recycled? What happens to that stuff? They still take it? They still take it. it Becomes expensive for the hauler because they're landfill. That that also prices higher. Um, so they take that to our landfill. That's on them. I mean that that that's a frustration for the contractor is that they've got materials that would otherwise be recycled that but they can't recycle. I think a bigger issue is when there's something that contaminates the rest of the load. That's a challenge that they have. Well, like if you have if you have a bin that's fifty percent glass, which we don't recycle, is is that what you mean by contaminant? I'm more referring to food waste or something like that. Mixed okay. stuff if it if beer bottles or half full and that that creates more of an issue i think glass and maybe kelly can let craig answer that or craig send the text to help me explain that but i think it's a bigger challenge for the vendor than it is for our cost can you free him up craig can you answer that question while we're waiting on Craig one of the things that I wanted to point out is, is with these new rates uh, I will be recommending a rate a lot of these others a good chance that the amount will down as we reduce the cost of the park look at rate increases for commercial and Residential solid waste to get the full cost. Have we been subsidizing that? Yeah. I mean, don't worry about the question to Craig. Let's just move on, okay? Well, I'll, I'll get that one. All right. Can we go down to a water and sewer increase? Can and talk about that. So the um, water and sewer increase is based on the February 
DPI. That's typically the month that we use to rebuild the budget. Um, it takes about six weeks after um, the month closes to get that rate. Um, so the CPI for February for the urban south, 0.87. We use our rate model to get as close to that as possible. We typically don't get exactly to uh, the two decimal point. So the closest we got in the rate model um, for fee increase, 0.83%. And that um, in the next budget year is all based on volume charge. Um, we're not raising minimum water rate. So we are proposing a water volume charge for volume charge. Um, you see there the water volume charge is changing four cents per CCF, which is equivalent to 758 gallons of water. And then the sewer volume charge is changing 50 cents um, for each unit with 758 gallons. An average residential. Um, account that six units, which is just under 4,500 gallons of water a month, is equivalent of about a dollar. And then a resident, a larger resident, eight um, under 6,000 would be about a dollar. And part of the reason we did a higher increase on the sewer side, if you recall, um, when we did our debt issuance a couple of months ago, um, the majority of those debt costs were on the sewer side. Um, so we're subsidizing. Um, our sewer rate that way. And the feasibility study did show um, in regards to the 2020 revenue bonds that we needed about a percent rate increase annually um, to sustain the fund. So this is just under the, the and then that would be the same increase on the um, stormwater side. Um, using the CPI, we rounded it to the next penny, which was um, dollars and eight cents that's up four dollars per ERU so that's about eight cents um, per ERU per month our residential is at a um, base of one one ERU so that would be eight cents per month that and then commercial would depend on how large so these uh, increases are literally to make the city whole with the cost of doing this Correct. and providing that. Correct. Build a little inflation into the rate, other increased costs. Any questions? Okay. You want to move on to the next? Water. Went over. Uh, okay, well, let's move on to some of our first. <coughs> okay. Who's going to present that? I'll, I'll hit. Okay. Please, I don't. Uh, I think I mentioned this during the like the had salaries, do salary increases uh, to keep our pay competitive, stay with the market. And uh, we had originally we had three percent uh, merit slash cola increase in the budget, and we would do that at mid year. Uh, however, given the that, that has been taken out of the budget at this point. And uh, I don't know of a community anywhere that has pay increases in the budget. I talked to a colleague today who actually looking at uh, furloughing some employees and different ways of doing that. Number one goal I have first safety of our employees and service to our citizens. But after that, other objective having this budget is that we don't get into that situation with employees. Now we may have fewer positions in the next year's budget. As we have vacancies, uh, we may not fill those positions. We may move people into other positions, have those vacancies from around the organization where there, uh, we 
where the need may be greater. That's that's been my goal moving forward. This not to furlough or eliminate positions that are filled. Do, do not see a way that we give salary increases and try to accomplish. And I guess are there any questions about that before we move on and talk about retirement system? Any questions? Let me repeat what I heard. This is what you initially were proposing, but you now are taking this out? Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, the other thing that I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, we're looking at asking to bring in budget below current year's request to get us where we need to be. Uh, as I mentioned, we traditionally give raises at mid year. If we were to give a $362,000 raise this year, $120,000 impact for a full fiscal year. So that's a challenge that department heads have is that the raise that their employees got was for six months, but there's now a full year in that. So that, that's a greater bringing those budgets. Are you giving them a guideline to shoot for? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. What guideline is that as a percentage? For most departments, it's 5% below current year level. We've made exceptions. Safety positions. And there, there's other departments where there's been different. Challenges based on some things that were put in bu budget last year, where there's, they've had some increases, and we're trying to adjust for some one time expenses that would either have been in the current year's budget or that may be in next year's budget. Uh, Lane, I just got a check from Mayor Tim Higgins, and she said that she wanted to share the comment that she wanted to do all that we can do not to furlough employees. Um, so what I think you were saying is that you were hoping we didn't have to. That's the main objective. Not, but uh, we are um, doing a hiring freeze and we're not replacing positions if they are vacated at the moment. There, there's some exceptions to that, uh, let's say, uh, there also in the, the utility fund is in a little bit better shape and, and we may be filling those positions quicker and we if we have vacancies there we may look at is there a position someone in the general fund we could move over there to store up that fund but yes we, we have a hiring freeze in place um, but with with some except to that Uh, the retirement system has mandated increases. This state treasurer is responsible for ensuring the uh, solvency of the retirement system. I've mentioned before the North Carolina retirement system is the I think, third strongest country for public pension systems. And uh, I think that this crisis will shrink the need for additional funding. And it's probably not the time to ask to not fund that. And if the treasurer's office says, no, we don't have a choice in this. Um, the funding, I think, was in the 90-something percent funded. The last I looked uh, across the system, it cost us 200 and, uh, Twenty-five thousand for the general fund to fund that, and uh, with the stock market doing poorly, that increases the need. Also, if other governments, local governments, follow what we're doing and uh, put in hiring freezes or don't or replace people that hire at lower rates, then there's less money into the system. That create challenges as well. Um, so I, I feel pretty.
pretty strong about the importance of retirements. We have a lot of men and women that are coming to work every day. Sometimes they're putting themselves in harm's way because of this virus where they're going. We've promised those folks that the pension um, will be there. And we've got to make sure it's funded for it to be solved. If you have cities out, I think the way to address that is to look at the employee contribution down the line, but that would take work legislation. There's a cap presented on the employee uh, contribution, not the employer. Uh, but I think this is what it is in terms of what the charge is, and I'd be happy to try to answer the questions. Is it a one-time expense or is it annually? Uh, this is annually, and there's projections for it to go up in the future, but it all and uh, what they're, they're paying out to employees. This is the pension for all the folks that have worked for us in the past and that are working for us now. No, I get that, but is this two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars increase going? It create a new standard for the amount going forward. Is this a catch-up rate of contribution? This will. Uh, we're, we're raising the a percentage of. And I don't know if Shannon or uh, Wade can tell you that percentage amount off the top of my head. I've seen different versions of how much we're going up each year, and it. In a couple of years, that we've got other increases that have been projected out to go in. Uh, Shannon, could you or Wade or perhaps Ruth tell us what we're going from um, percentage to percent, what percent of percent each year, at least for this coming fiscal year? I know in the upcoming budget for FY21, there's a different rate for law enforcement and the rest of our workforse. Um, the rate for the regular workforce is 10.2% and the law enforcement rate is 97. And I, I think that was just over a percentage increase, if, if memory serves me correct. Um, projection for the next two years is going up as high as thir like 13 and a quarter. Um, so it's gonna continue to increase the next couple as well. But yeah, this is not just a one-time catch up, this is I remembered it was nine some. And there's always been a difference between the law enforcement retirement system amount and the regular local government. Law enforcement have a slightly better uh, retirement fund than the other employees. Lane, Mayor Pro Tem Haggins offered to also wanted to go back and clarify um, some local government due to the recession before looked at holding the raises. So what we've discussed so far is merit part of it, but what about other raises? Merit and coal would be frozen, yeah. Yes. Merit and yes. be frozen right now. Okay, she wanted that. Before this started, and we've taken that out. And you've taken it down. Okay. Thank you very much. Lane, I've, I've read about companies and some cities, municipalities, where they have lieu of furloughing anybody, where they've actually had to do some across the board cuts, um, which you obviously don't ever want to do if the money's there. Can you? talking to your network have you bumped into that much i haven't talked to doing that yet my goal is not that whoops for just worst case scenario planning i talked to someone today who was considering furloughing uh everybody in his organization one day a month for the next fiscal year and so there's some different things like to do to look at worst case. Um, I don't think we're there yet. That would be something I would 
try to avoid doing. And if we got that situation, we might look at employees different there that um, are on the front line dealing with this versus those that are not. Any other questions? Um, I have a quick question here. Um, obviously, what has been the cost to our protective, personal protective equipment that we've had to supply for our employees to keep them safe? And obviously, going forward planning, we know that we need to do things differently in the future forever. Um, what has been a, a dollar value impact making sure I don't know that off the top of my head right now and if Chief Cornell's in, he may have that in text if he or Shannon. Uh, but Gail Long in the finance office is she's been through the FEMA training and she is uh, tracking all those expenditures. Chief Cornell's primarily been responsible for coordinating the PPE equipment. We got an order of last in within the last week. 6,000 was the number. And divided up primarily police, fire, and then we still have a good number of testimonies. Something that we're doing now, Greg Powers group going through facilities and looking at changes that we can make, whether it's putting up the plexiglass partitions to limit contact between customers coming into facilities in our and uh, we're tracking all those expenditures. That's FEMA reimbursement. Uh, I for the funds to do any of those um, improvements. We're, we're, we're in good shape there, uh, but we're we're, we're tracking all that, and all that should be 100% reimbursed FEMA. And I've gotten a text that we spent 100000 on masks so far within the city. Uh, someone had told me that uh, those masks, that I, $0.89 cents a piece, are now selling for 4 or $5 a piece. It's been a tremendous up, and I'm not even sure that that qualifies as gouging prices. We're, we're making changes to our facilities, and depending on when the governor uh, says the state will reopen, we will adjust on that, and we won't go immediately um, back. Life is normal. Uh, I imagine we will continue to uh, platoon employees to limit the number of folks that we would have in workstations and also potentially limit the exposure of an entire department to the virus, but looking at ways to um, make the workplace safer though, for those employees coming back to work. I don't know if that answered your question, Chef. Uh, yes, I just curious, did you have any some of these costs? Well, glad to hear that FEMA reimbursement is gonna be happening. Some of these costs are things that we're going to have forever now. Mm -hmm. um, just I don't know at this point how do we get a number on that and make that we have that line item somewhere in our budget. What it's going to be forever. Yeah, and I don't know. I think that'll just be part of the new norm. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're going through it too with the money that seemingly we're making on selling a lot of snacks. Um, we, we have had to reinvest in a million things that we didn't do. Um, and I'm going to think it applies to all of our different parts. Thank you. So on our agenda, the next item is um, hot wire revenue. Yes, we don't have information there. We're still hot wires having some of the same struggles we have with their cutoff. They're, uh, they're, they're not disconnecting people right now. And they've also added a number of customers for free to uh, 
school kids to help them with their schoolwork. Um, we, um, in the last quarter, we had a, um, or last year rather, um, we had budgeted a transfer of $2.4 million, which is um, better than we had before. Part of that $2.4 million included um, nearly $600,000 settlement with AEG. Uh, that settlement money won't be in there this year. So we're at essence leaving the hot wire numbers flat. And so uh, by, by doing that, it'll go from $2.4 million uh, transfer to a $6 million transfer. I, I just don't think uh, we know all the details give the challenges of the virus in the economy right now. Um, I, I think that this utility has made it a lot easier for our school kids to continue to take classes. Um, I'd also sent you all something a few weeks back uh, that talked about what local governments can do coming out of this and uh, this urban futurist theorized that um, hella working in Zoom meetings is going to become more of the norm, and I think that can make this utility more valuable to us, a place for people to live. And hopefully that's something. Uh, we had started work with the county to uh, market our utility before this crisis, and when we come out of this, I think it'll be a positive, but out of um, just being very conservative with the numbers, I think we intend to leave that at $3 million. I'd gotten looking at some stuff from Hotwire, but I think that's probably the best place to be right now. Any questions, um, Anna, would you add? I would just like to add that um, we've had some conversations with Rod Kreider, who is very interested in helping to kind of rebrand um, Salisbury around the technology and so i'm hoping that we can get our uh, committee up and going uh, to work with edc and the county and uh, the steering committee uh, in regard to that because i think it's an opportunity for our community uh, just simply we've made national headlines with the school system uh, around the one-to-one -one devices fact that we have so many kids who have not hit the in terms of the education uh, opportunity. And then there's been lots of uh, support through um, the CIS uh, through the hotspots uh, that have been given to students who are outside of, of our uh, city limits. But I think it could grow, and it's pretty exciting. So I'm, sometimes there's silver lining in a really terrible uh, event such as this. So hopefully we can focus on that. So up next is the trans, transit fund transfers, Lane. And, and uh, I'll ask um, Cannon, um to, to go over this and may have Rodney to join, but this is an area where I've had some concern about growing costs there. Also, that we're spending a lot of money for people outside our jurisdiction to have a service that our full community doesn't have. Um, in the current fiscal year, Still going through numbers on this, but in the current fiscal year, the general fund transfer to transit was six hundred and thirty-three thousand um, dollars. The transit budget was much greater than that because of federal revenue we receive. Um, and if you, our, our goal is to get this down to six hundred thousand transfer uh, to the 
from the general fund to the transit fund, that 5% that we talked about. Um, there may be a budget item, the uh, agenda item in this coming meeting, relief funds that may help transition in transit. Uh, but I'll let Shannon talk about what we're trying to do there. Shannon? Sorry, unmuting. Um, so as Mr. Bailey stated, um, if we look at a 5% reduction in the transit fund, um, that takes them from a transfer of 63 to just $1,000. Um, that's a, a small impact um, to that fund of 33,000. And in order to do that, we would still be able to maximize our federal grant dollars. Um, one of the things we would need to look at is kind of revamp, revamp our service areas, our route, um, to make sure that we can do that as economically um, as possible. Um, I don't know if Mr. Pearson wants to jump in here on the ideas that we have on that, um, to make sure that we maximize the grant dollars. Rodney? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think you covered it well, Shannon. Um, we, we um, like Mr. Bailey said, we need to look at um, services we're providing outside the city of Salisbury and be creative and see how we can um, um, continue to reduce our expenses, but at the same time, uh, doing the best we can do to secure grant funding. I haven't seen any spreadsheets these last two discussions, right? There are no spreadsheets for fiber and for the transportation fund. No, sir. The um, transit or the trans fiber fund late in getting numbers, and we're still working through uh, some of that with them. Um, and they have the Mike Grandizio and I had conversations over the weekend. We had it Friday night, and uh, some last night, text back and forth, and. Right now, I think just to be conservative, we want to keep it at three million in terms of trans uh, the, the transit numbers. We think that the six hundred thousand would still allow us to fully utilize all the federal revenue that we get for transit, and I'd like to cap it at that and look at providing service within the city and. a lot of changes are operating. Any other questions? They were and we've already gone over the call. There weren't quite many else, right? Lane? The very last sheet is deferred capital. Okay. Uh, that that gets into a lot of the stuff it was supposed to be in the that was in the CIP that I, I don't think we can fund, but I'm gonna just go down this list. And uh, if you have questions away, stop and, um, and if you want to do some of this, we can talk about it. Um, but uh, downtown incentives, $150,000, we have that much item projects are already earmarked or encumbered in the budget. Some of those were from last year, so there was a two year window that they had to do the work. Some are into this year, but uh, it's 150,000 we have there. In the uh, West End transformation, uh, $400,000 in this current fiscal year's budget. And uh, it looks, here to date, we have spent um, $96,000. We still have some projects that are coming in, and we think that that's going to be a total of just under $200,000 fiscal year, which would have a $200,000 left. And uh, that's the amount that we would have in um, next year's budget uh, for the transformation. And in essence, we're rolling over the money that we didn't spend this year. Um, 
in the uh, Ketner Corner. Uh, that's the uh, intersection of Ennis and Mahaley Drive, where food line store number one was $100,000. That's something we have heard. We had some parks and rec playground structures of $40,000. I think this is mainly a community park. We're hurrying that. Um, we have $675,000 for Grant Street Greenway. Um, this is already in progress. There's some grant money, so that's rolling forward. Um, we had planned to spend $200,000 on the second part, City Park Lake. Uh, before the virus hit, we were ahead of schedule, so we appropriated money in this fiscal year for fund balance for that. Now, because of social distancing and issues work, it may not get done in this fiscal year, but we've got that money encumbered. Um, the $780,000 is train station second platform. Um, just a reminder, we had uh, committed a couple years ago, math grant state, uh, the grant amount $780,000. I thought this was going to be delayed because there was issues tunnel versus bridge overpass. The uh, NC Rail has found additional money. They're going with the tunnel option, and that project moving forward. Uh, it's going to happen. You'll have to do the $780,000 map. However, um, I don't know that, that project will be completed fiscal year 21. and our payment is not due until, uh, matter of fact, I'm almost certain that it won't be completed in 21, and uh, it's not something we have to do um, in the next fiscal year, but the work will begin in that. Uh, Houston Road bike lane, sidewalks, that's in progress. Some money for that. Same thing for um, Old, Concord, Old Concord Road, street improvements and Brenner Avenue, those are next year's budget and the, some of the sidewalk work pro progress. Uh, the next item, 525,000 asphalt resurfacing. Um, council has discretion on whether or not to spend this money or not. Uh, however, uh, this is a percent reimbursable by Powell Bill and um, I've heard a lot a couple of years ago about um, potholes and issues with street surfaces, and I'd recommend that we keep that in there. I and would too. We do use our power bill. Perhaps we could utilize the power bill funds in other areas, but, but uh, recommend to keep that in place. Um, HVAC systems, we had money in there for replacements. Next fiscal year, we're deferring those projects unless something breaks. We're doing the same thing with roofs. We have exception for two buildings, Hall Gym and the Plaza. And we feel like both of those are areas where we have to replace the roof or we're going to have um, structural and other issues there with those facilities. Um, Fire Station 3 was um, supposed to be, again, this coming fiscal year. I feel like we need to defer that. Big concern I have there is that uh, making sure our fund balance is that before we begin this project. Um, that would be a huge amount of debt to undertake. Um, and, uh, recommend we delay that. I know that some of you have talked about um, construction cost is never going to be cheaper. I understand that, but I have concern about our debt load and our um, Next two items are in the fire department. We have a thermal imaging camera that will be in the budget, and uh, we're deferring some breathing air compressors that with the fire department. Uh, we're, um, we'd wanted to replace one fire truck. Now looks like we'll be possibly doing 
those in the upcoming year. We may add the uh, breathing air compressors uh, to a uh, fire truck replacement in uh, FY2. We have a very good vehicle maintenance staff that do a wonderful job of servicing all our vehicles. And that gives a little bit of comfort with our fire trucks, but that's something that we have to definitely do in the next fiscal year. Um, a couple of other items um, that are not in the FY21 budget wouldn't necessarily be part of a capital improvement program, but we had $100,000 passed for the housing stabilization program. Uh, we don't have those funds in there. Uh, budget appropriate, we do have um, $210,000 revenue sales that we carry forward on this. and. Uh, we do not have, and they have not asked for, the school system has not asked for $95,000 in terms of funding for extra things within the school system. And as I point every year, we talk about this, it's not something most municipalities do. Most municipalities do not fund the schools, and I don't know that we can afford to do that this year with all the other challenges that we um, didn't get interrupted in the list, but I don't know if there's any questions about any items on the list. Dave, any questions? Okay. Um, so I guess, Lane, what is our next uh, step in this process? Well, one of the big things I wanted to do is just give you just a stark picture of the challenges that we're facing. And uh, Miller is, says that the manager always says it's the worst budget ever. This is truly the worst budget in my career and life. And we're in whole new territory here. I worry about like great depression effects of this. Um, you know, if you have a hurricane, power in three or four weeks at the latest, and that can drive a hundred miles in some direction, and you're out of this. This is like hurricanes hit every state in the country, and it's back next month too. Um, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of options that, that we have. Um, and we're asking the department to make some, some cuts that are painful. Um, when I came here five years ago, uh, we had gone through a recession and we had the effects of the fiber that it was really clear we, we weren't showing what we had done to the rest of the budget because of fiber in terms of cuts and we've been rebuilding and I was excited about that. We've done some wonderful things in our police department in terms of crime numbers. We've done wonderful things in our police department with how we engage the community and, and the responses that we've got with citizens. Uh, we had some great needs within our fire department. Um, it, it, then the last year, we realized we weren't fully budgeting salaries the way we should have in fire departments of overtime. Uh, we also had two departments that had been hit really hard by the recession and by um, vibrant cuts, and that was public works and our rec department. And very proud of what we're doing to, to rebuild those. And uh, I think in some ways we're undoing those. But I don't know that we have any other choice. Um, I think we, we've got to get a budget passed that we can live with, gets us through this period, and think about what life looks like afterwards when we come out of this, and how we start to rebuild and do some of these things different. Um, and, 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 
also something that's been a little bit challenging and you would think that numbers you text back and forth, but social distancing has made this process even a little bit more difficult. Um, normally I like to just walk upstairs to see Shannon and the budget folks from downstairs and now we're trying to get on Zoom meetings and it just, it makes a difficult situation a little, even look more cumbersome, but I guess that's a minor issue. But I guess what I'm listening, would like to hear from council is, uh, have I missed the boat? My, is there disagreement on my thoughts on tax rate in the next fiscal year? I, I don't think that we can do that given the challenges that, they, that we're facing. Uh, and then does the council have a different view on how we look at these? And or they have a different view on any of the cut look like. Count by in. So Lane, I I, uh, I know going into this, we were looking at pressure to spend four cents more tax rate up. Merit increases, coal increases that are installed. Different things to talk about, and I, I may have. My attention may have waned a moment ago. I, I don't recall you saying to us you're recommending a particular tax rate. I, I remember, recommend or remember you saying we, we, this was in the budget, it's not now, but did you actually come to us with a, I'm going to recommend a fill in the blank rate a minute ago? Because I missed that. No, 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 no. What I said, and I apologize, I wasn't clear, and I said it hey, for last week. Um, Normally, I have no problem. I've recommended a number of tax increases in my career. I, I get all that, that you're, you're not comfortable doing that, but are, are you coming to us with a flat rate? Are you coming to us with something different? My recommendation to you is that we rate the same. We do not increase the tax. I don't think this is the year to do it, given the economic hardship that people are facing. And if we don't think that we think taxes aren't going to be slower in coming in, I just, I don't think. I agree with that. And so the budget and all of the cuts and the adjustment that we've gone over in this meeting helped us to get to that point. Is that correct? That's correct. But I'm also, along with that, I just talked about where we can capture the cost of services through fees that we fully capture those costs. Uh, and that's the second part of the revenue question. So help me understand, uh, just so for the public benefit, those, uh, what would be a yearly increase to someone's bill for those, uh, both separately and cumulatively? Kelly, go back to the screen. There. Um, actually, go back one more, uh, or, or to the top, top of that page. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the waste management fee increases uh, for recycling, we're looking at a monthly increase of ninety-four cents. The residential portion of that would be up to 48 cents for uh, the landfill and up to 88 cents for uh, the waste uh, collection. Now, I think we've already made some cuts uh, in those areas, so it would be less than that. Uh, and that's where I was saying earlier, and perhaps I wasn't clear, uh, and I apologize for that, as we make reductions in expenditure of those part need for the uh, revenue is decreased. So it would not exceed um, those amounts. So it'd be 88 plus 48 plus 94 cents. So I think with those reductions, we're looking at no more than $2.50 a month for those fees uh, times 12. So we're talking about $25 a year. 
say. And, and I think that if we don't keep up with the cost, then it's just going to make it much bigger in years to come. So if it's 25 a year, I think we can dig deep in our personal budget and help to pay for that. The water and sewer fees and the stormwater fees are based on the guy urban south, and that comes out. We, we also round up around those numbers. The rate was 1.87. Uh, we round up to get an even penny, not a fraction thereof. So the water volume charges would be going up uh, four cents, and the sewer would be going up uh, 0.15 our rates would still be extremely competitive in the region on that. And that's something where we, we need to keep up with our cost. Um, we've got, there are a number of systems in the state that are failing because of communities haven't done that. And, and they don't have the robust infrastructure we have. Um, we still have economic development projects that are happening, uh, and it's because we have a strong utility. I, I think that's important. We uh, keep our rates up over our costs. And also, it's a huge asset for our uh, branding and for um, having really big companies who need uh, both uh, large quantities of water as well as good quality water and we have that to offer but we can't do that if we don't keep up with meeting all the requirements so i'm also in favor of that council any comment I have a couple. Um, I agree with the idea of cost recovery as some things that we have to do. Obviously, we can't do it, for example, transportation, 15 bucks a ride or whatever. Um, agree with no tax increase. My concern is that when you wiggle your way through all these pages, it doesn't look that dire. It's um, which kind of surprises me. My, my concern is that we could end up in um, more challenging circumstance than been conservatively projected here. I um, think that um, Restaurants are going to have to figure out social distancing. You're having trouble talking to the budget. I mean, what about a restaurant that's got to have six or eight feet between tables and you cut, you know, restaurant seating down from, you know, down to a third of what it is now. And how does that affect sales taxes and such? And what happens to hotels and all of that? And I, I see our situation. I could see us having to revisit the budget in we six months. Budget. Right. I, I could just, I could see revenues not keeping up even with these conservative estimates. A point that concerns me. Um, I'd like to see a, I mean, just for the sake of discussion, maybe, I mean, sometimes you show, you know, a budget, F budget, C budget. I got a sense that this is kind of, you know, conservative C. I think it would be great if things were better. You know, the president says we come just barreling out of this thing in the third and fourth quarters. Um, but if we don't, I, you know, I'm 70. I, I see my generation is social distancing for a long time. They're scared to go out. I'm, I'm not as freaked out going to the grocery store, but I don't have a single sibling. I got three siblings live in this town. They have never, they have not been to a grocery store 
they've not been to a takeout restaurant. They do 100% of, you know, uh, delivery, pickup. They have tables in their garages, anything that comes into their house. They park it there for three days before they bring it into their house. I feel like I'm doing something wrong if I bring a box of cereal into my house and put it in the cabinet, have a bowl of cereal the next day. Um, I don't think my, my siblings are alone. You know, they're my age group, I guess. And so I think we could have some real stresses uh, on some of our revenues that are a little more difficult than what your conservative project are. And I'm concerned about that. Changes. Would you uh, maybe do um, the budgets based on the decreases of the sales revenue, the property tax, in, a, in the most conservative, and then another spreadsheet that shows, you know, a 20%, 10%? Uh, I'd like to see comparative outcomes. Um, and, you know, you're, you're right. I'd like to see, you know, I don't want to say worst case, but um, what what if we get some sense of what April looks like and then what May looks like, Wade, you know, on the revenue side, you know, from the non-property tax piece, and then compare that to, uh, you know, I'd like to see you know, if this is really bad, what happens to us? I mean, we would have to adapt. And it's like they say, problem with coming up, dealing with this thing. Steve Fisher repeated this thing about it's like uh, building an airplane while it's up in the air and you're flying it. Um, I, I would rather us not have to deal with the budget on the fly. I'd like to know, you know, if, if the hole is deeper than we than is shown here, just to have some contingency plans of our own. Actually, I, I, I was trying to figure out how to articulate this. You know, I don't think our issues on the tax rate side, I think it's on the expense side, how we address just, I don't think we can, we can, how do I put this? I think real estate taxes are going to be what they're going to be. We may have a little bit lower collection rate. We can forecast that. Sales taxes is the big variable, in my opinion. Well, that, you know, um, real estate tax, we have. Think time just a minute. And then I'll, get where you can't hear the dog here. Um, you mentioned something, obviously it's our desire to not have to do anything that impact our progress that we've been making relative to talent and our bench. Um, but you mentioned something that one of your peers came up with as an idea. I, I'd love to have, and I, not that I'm recommending it, not that I want it to happen, but to, to know that we've made some sort of analysis of what it would be if there were such a thing as some sort of a rolling furlough type structure, what that would do for us as it relates to how it would create a cost save. So if we get four months down the road and we end up having to shelter in place again for three more months, we've already got something that gives us some ideas about how that could be, how, how we could implement that. Do you follow what I'm saying, Lane? I understand and we will, we will have that, we don't have that now. And we're going to track revenues even more closely than we already do. See how we come out as well as extended. I, I, I understand. Definitely. Yeah, we go back to a comment, David, you made a meeting or two ago of what happened comes back again in the fall. And I think your point, having put some thought into what we might do in that event now, maybe makes the task choices a little easier to have had a chance. But again, not a desired outcome, not what anybody wants to have happen. Just that we put thought into how, what are some ways we could do that where folks, I, I don't want to let a single person go. Um, or, or yeah, well. I don't, don't want anything like that. But if we had a situation where we could phase in some, especially if we're in a work from home environment anyway, phase in some sort of method where we do that over a period of several months, uh, what does that save us in terms of Just ask a question. Maybe more theoretical than anything else, but just curious. 
Brian, I, well, thank I, would you. Like... I, I apologize for coming in late, so I'm going to jump in. Um, I, I agree with a lot of what I'm hearing here. Uh, I, I'm curious, though, in, in terms of our revenues and in terms of, of, of taxes, have we as local government ever explored the stock compensation tax? I mean, how would, how would that look? Could we do something? You know, are there any other local governments who, who are doing that? Do, do you know, Lane? There used to be an intangible tax in North Carolina, and the General Assembly did away with it. Fred Stanback led the charge in the 70s. Wait, is that exactly the same as the stock compensation tax? What stock compensation? Where you're looking at um, the, the kind of income that is actually or, or really the kind of money that's being spent in a community through, uh, through Uber, through Facebook, through Twitter, through YouTube. Um, we don't have legal authority. Brian, I agree with what you said. I just wanted to add two comments. One is that I agree with what you said about the tax revenue piece. Um, that's only 50% or a little less of our total revenues coming in. The rest are from a bunch of different sources, sales tax being the biggest next bite. I agree with you on the expense also. Um, that's where we could have some troubles. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of companies out there that are doing what you call the rolling furloughs that they're giving people day off every month or every two weeks or something and they regrettably don't get their pay but they're you know I, I would prefer to everybody take a day off a month and firing one out of every 20 people um, and I think most employees would do that they would see that as their contribution uh, to the entire effort I just want to know what the impact is I agree with you. yeah and, and again it's not that we're saying that's going to be necessary I just think it's worthy to maybe consider if, you know if that's something that is an option. I'd love to know if it's got any viability before we spend time thinking about it. You understand what I'm saying, Blaine? I understand. And um, we will have, we will very, very close to monitor revenue expended. We already do that. We will be extra diligent doing that. But when we finish out this fiscal year, roll into coming year. And it may be that we get have to if the second round of this and you may have to look at brass top. The only yeah, thing I'm saying is that. let's have a view of what that more drastic option might look like before we have to look at it. Aren't you saying that Brian? I think I don't know that it necessarily needs to be part of the budget document, but I'd love to have a conversation about right. rolling furlough and how that might, what that might accomplish. I don't know what that looks like. That one day a quarter, one day a, I don't know. Just would like some input from you guys on that. The other thing that I would say, and this I'll, I'll yield the floor. Um, I'm very comfortable with a lot of things. Very most of the things that you talked about. The one thing I didn't get necessarily real comfortable with. Did I understand that we we Shannon, this may be a question for you. The number we're expecting to receive from, from Hotwire is going up next year um, by a significant amount. Anticipate it being flat. Okay, well, I, I thought I heard 2.43 million. I'm not sure where I messed up on that, but um, you, you heard 2.4 from the general fund to the, the utility, but part of that six hundred thousand dollar difference, five six. Got I get, I get what you're saying now. I got it. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I know that this is just the initial conversation, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we're fooling ourselves when we sit here and say we're not going to do a property tax increase. However. We are going to do a waste management increase and a water and sewer increase and a stormwater increase. I said this every year we've talked about the budget. People at home get a bill, no matter where that bill comes from. It's all from the city. This is all one big package. 
think we need to understand why we're doing certain things. I'm not even sure on that, and we don't have time to do that today with all this. We know why recycling rates are changed, and we know the global impact there. But the landfill and the waste collection, that increase, the water and sewer increase, I know we want to trend fast because we saw a lot of communities around us past years for 10 years haven't touched it, and then suddenly they had to do an astronomical thing. We've not done that. We could take a year break as we are in a certain situation. And I have no idea why we would do a stormwater increase after the changes that I was adamantly against when we rolled out a couple of years ago. I thought that was gonna fix us raise. Clearly it did. So I think there's a lot more moving pieces here than just saying we're not gonna do a property tax increase, we're gonna tag it everywhere else. So um, I'm glad this is just our first conversation from my perspective to be able to even think about passing the budget. Uh, I agree with um, Brian in pointing out the fact that um, are there other places to save? I'm not saying I'm for the one day furlough at all, but I'm saying there's got to be some places to go back. Uh, but you know, as long as everybody understands where I stand getting off this call in the next five minutes, um, again, I do appreciate you all adjusting the time up. Um, I, I am in no form or fashion in agreement with what's laid out here. Hope this is just the beginning day of So, any other comment from council or instruction to uh, Lane? On the cut side of it, expenditure, are any concerns? We still have some discretionary spending in there that might ought to think about later down the road, depending on how things roll out. I, I think to Tamara's point that if there's more discussion, it's going to happen. But I do think you, you went from our last official conversation about this, saying that there was four cents of pressure to coming in today saying, revenue neutral, no increase. I think you guys have done a lot of work and I want to appreciate the fact that you've already taken a lot off the table. Things that were going to be some monumental pressures. I think again, last comment about this, I shared David's concern that even though I think coming out of this phase we're in now, there could be in the next fiscal year, another protracted phase of four of the same that could be twice or three times as long as spring. And that's going to be all within that budget cycle. So I, I think you guys, uh, Shannon, Wade, Lane, all of you folks that are involved preparing what you prepared today have done a ton of work. So thankful for the fact that you've already recognized some, some great places to start. I think the rest of it's just going to be scratching our heads, trying to do what we think makes the most sense. And I think it plan A, plan B, plan C, or D, F, whatever it is, David, that call them, that can go back to in the event things change in worst case scenario. So I, I'm, I thank you for what you've done. You've done a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I all of water series. We just, uh, approved uh, 40, 40 million or more that we're refinancing and uh, some larger portion of that was actually for uh, improvements to our water source uh, system. We also have a looming issue of what's going to happen with the FERC licensing and we don't know where that and so I just want you to be thinking about that uh, as, as we're uh, making these considerations uh, of where we are doing increases or not. Um, and along that same line, I just got an email text uh, with a resolution of support from the town of Cleveland uh, in regard to our um, water sewer resolution that we have 
uh, included in the package that has gone for so I think uh, it's wonderful that our sister um, municipalities are realizing um, how important uh, this issue is for all of us uh, within the Rowan County jurisdiction. So, Have we followed up with the Ag Department or the EPA about some of those grant that they had available relative to our water plant? I think that, well, I have questions of it. Uh, however, until we're ready to and have an application ready with all the information, they can't really help us with uh, what our rate uh, as far as um, doing uh, the interest rate um, and all of that, the time uh, until we know more about what we would include in it. Would we have to pay the entire 20 million or would they, this uh, Pedro give part of it? And there's just so much up in the air that we're not at a place that we uh, can go for, for that at this point. Did we, one of the conversations, one of the questions we asked, we didn't know when we were, I forget whether it's EPA or Ag Department, but place that had the 0% loans for 30 years or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. And we have just, yeah. we just agreed to this three and a quarter percent financing on the processing plant, that, th that 30 million we voted on. Um, uh, did we look into the possibility of, I don't know the right word, but refinancing that 3% debt at 0%? Are we looking at that lane? Jim, Jim Beamer and I had a conversation about zero percent and, and there were some issues with that i don't think jim is on this call but um i can get some information back to you on that but we haven't had haven't forward on that i think the mayor's correct we need to figure out what projects we have actually jim is on now uh, we've got um we, we need to look at what potential debt we have coming up in that we move forward but Jim said there was some issues with that uh, that program it wasn't quite the way it was laid out <laughs> more complex it sounded so great on that I came really excited about this other question it, it wasn't quite so simple folks I, I hate to be rude but I'm gonna need to jump off camera you might need to as well I wish you all the very best Sorry that I'm having to sneak away quickly. But before you do that, Lane, do we need a, a vote? No, no. I think I've, I've heard counsel. Oh. All right. Thank you. Then uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. You have a motion. All those cry. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion. Carried.